Joining me now is Jay Seculo, Chief Counsel of the American Center for Law and Justice and host of the Jay Seculo Live radio show. His latest book, The Rise of ISIS, A Threat We Can't Ignore, and he joins me from Tennessee. Jay, thank you very much for taking the time. I appreciate it. Hi, Larry. Thanks for having me. All right, Jay. So the president says, get off my back about calling it radical Islam. It won't matter what I call it. After all, uh, he argues, uh, World War II would have been the same whether or not we had derisive names for the Japanese and for the Germans. Your reaction? Well, we were fighting the Nazis, and we called them Nazis because that's what they were. Uh, we didn't call them Europeans. We didn't say people from the European theater or region. We fought in the European theater against a, te a designated enemy. It was, in that case, the Nazis or the fascists of Italy. Uh, when the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, we didn't say people from uh, the Far East. We identify who the enemy is. So I, I think the president is consistently, and he's doubled down on it, uh, making a mistake in failing to point out the fact that we're not dealing just with a religion from a part of the world. We're dealing with radical jihadists. It is a element within Islam that needs to be purged out, no doubt. But you've got to be able to call the enemy, identify the enemy. It's much harder to attack them when you don't know who they are or you're afraid to say it. And the president's doing this, Larry, because he believes that somehow this is going to appease the Muslim world. But the fact of the matter is the Muslim world wants to get rid of, I mean, a large, if you look at Jordan, Egypt, even Saudi Arabia, they want to get rid of these guys. So uh, he's not appeasing anybody. And, uh, you know, as never Chamberlain showed, appeasement doesn't work out very well. Jay, if the president were here and he's not, I suspect he would say something like, as far as tactics and strategies and policies go, to quote a well-known former secretary of state, what difference does it make? Well, it makes a lot of difference. But, you know, you, you talk about the strategy. And I, I think, look, there, there's legitimate criticism that's being foisted on the White House right now by the left and the right. I mean, CNN uh, just the other day was talking about this. And their reporter was saying, well, doesn't it make a difference? And Josh Ernest doubled down. Here's the problem. What is the strategy? Uh, we just have had a major terror attack in the United States, and there are 49 dead Americans. It doesn't matter if they're Republicans or conservative, gay or straight, Christian, Jewish, whatever their faith, or no faith at all, there are 49 dead Americans at the hands of a jihadist, and a jihadist that was known to the federal government. That, to me, is a systematic failure of the FBI. I read today on our radio broadcast, Larry, from the new report from the Department of Homeland Security this month, June 2016, where they say, do not use the words Sharia, do not use the words jihadists, do not use the word UMA, which is the world Muslim population. Take those out of the lexicon. Mm -hmm. I think this is part of the problem. The political correctness is running deep, and the impact of that is very serious for our country. And unfortunately, we've just seen the consequences just uh, a few days ago. Jay, in a way, I think you're siding with the president. Let me explain. The president says it's not about radical Islam. It seems to me what you, say, you are saying, or what many others are saying, it's about Islam itself. There's something fundamentally wrong with Islam. Islam might very well be incompatible with Western civilization. Well, look, I, I think Islam, as it's practiced by these guys, certainly is. Uh, you know, there are moderates within Islam, and I, I don't call them moderates. I call them reformers. I mean, there are reformers within Islam. you got Zudi Jasser, who I know you know. And Dr. Jasser has been an articulate and outspoken critic of what we call political Islam. So I think it's fair to draw a distinction between what would be political Islam, which is motivating the jihadists, and more, more moderate or reformers with inside of Islam. But this has to be in a much... Look, this was the second terrorist to come out of this mosque in as many years, in two years. This is a mosque of 110 people in, in Florida, and two terrorists have come out of this mosque. So what does it tell you? Why are we not doing surveillance on the mosque? The president, you know, made this speech about we have a First Amendment, religious freedom. Trust me, I've been litigating religious freedom cases for, you know, 35 years. The First Amendment does not protect terrorism, whether it's by people that are of faith or no faith at all. That's not a First Amendment question. The president conflates the two, and that's part of the problem. Jay, the reason I, I talk about whether or not we've got an issue deeper than just radical Islam, you look at the polls, according to one uh, British poll, a majority of British Muslims feel that homosexuality should be illegal. Right. Look, I mean, you, this is what I've never understood within the, within the gay and lesbian community when they've kind of sided sometimes with the Shariists. I mean, you couldn't practice their, their sexual orientation in Saudi Arabia gets you killed. 
Uh, that sexual orientation in most of the Muslim countries is a penalty by death by stoning. So, or as, as we've seen, thrown off the tops of buildings. That's what ISIS' uh, chosen method of extermination is. In a sense, the radical jihadists, Larry, are equal opportunity terrorists. They go after anyone that doesn't agree with their particular view of Islam. If you don't agree with their view, as I said, no matter what your faith, sexual orientation doesn't matter, you're the enemy. The West is the enemy, and we saw that, unfor unfortunately, firsthand in Orlando. Jay, when the president gave his five-minute statement, he took no questions, he again made a call for further gun control legislation. Just one time, and again, there were no questions, but just one time, I'd love for a reporter to say, Mr. President, can you tell me specifically what new gun law would have stopped this slaughter? Well, here's the thing. So let's say you had tougher gun laws and somehow that restrained the ability of the terrorists to get the gun, which I don't believe it would have, but let's say it would have. So then they take an uh, improvised explosive device. They didn't use guns in, at, uh, the Sarnoff brothers didn't use guns. They used an, exp in, in, uh, an explosive device. Uh, in Tel Aviv's, the attacks that we've seen, yeah, that's the last one they used guns, but before that they were doing knife attacks and killing dozens of people. So th this whole notion that we're going to somehow be able to regulate the munition or the ammunition or the weaponry, and that's going to stop this, uh, they're smarter than that. They'll be able to get the guns, by the way. And also, I take it a step further, they'll use other devices. They're not, they're not wed to guns. They're perfectly happy to use improvised explosive devices, and they did that in Boston. The FBI head, James Comey, says that there are investigations in all 50 states. We're talking about over 1,000 yep. people. Hundreds of people are being yep. investigated. How do you stop yep. something where there are hundreds of people being investigated in every yep. single state, given finite resources? Well, what do well, you do? Yeah. Yeah, well, James Comey's a friend. I like James Comey. I've worked with him before at the Justice Department when he was a deputy to John Ashcroft. Uh, and I, I, I know James Comey. He's a good man. Let me tell you this. He said it's like finding a needle in a haystack. And, Larry, here's the problem. We had the needle. I mean, in the, the most recent case, we had the needle. He was on a terror watch list twice. We took him off. He did this act. Tashfeen Malik comes into the United States, checks off on a form, I am not a terrorist. We don't check her social media posts, which pledged, already had pledged allegiance to ISIS. The Russian government warned the federal government, our federal government, to not let the Sarnef brothers back in because they had gone to the Chechnyan region to be trained as terrorists. We let them in anyways. And then the FBI director in Boston said, we need the, we need the citizenry's help to figure out who these guys are. They interviewed them 16 months before. So this is not a, you can't blame this on the American people. And I respect James Comey. I think he's got a systematic failure. He's responsible for it. He better get it fixed. And let me tell you something, if there's a hundred or a thousand under investigation, I'm sure if there was an ask for an increase of resources to go after these guys, Congress would approve it. The fact is, that's not what's come out of James Comey's mouth. What's come out of his mouth is, this is a needle in a haystack. I think that's a false analogy, to be blunt. The killer's parents are, are from Afghanistan. He, of course, is born here. Yep. What do you think about yep. Donald Trump's position on having a moratorium on certain countries where, where we have issues like this? Well, he came in under Ronald, I mean, the father came in when Ronald Reagan was the president. So, I mean, you, you don't know what's going to motivate the individual terrorist, I mean, in the particular situation. Now we know the wife's involved, uh, which is not a great shock to me, but for, for some it may be. But, you know, of course she was involved. Now, she, she knew what was going to happen. She didn't call the FBI. She didn't call the police. Disney warned the FBI about this guy because they picked him up on surveillance. But the FBI didn't relist him. So, you know, a ban on immigration into the United States from region specific is not a bad idea in the context of if we don't know who the people are, we should not let them in. And I, I say that as the grandson of a Russian immigrant, but my grandfather had the papers, went through Ellis Island, went through the whole process. I mean, James Comey also said we can't verify who these people are. So I think in region aid right now is the safer bet. I think that's the smarter bet. I think that for our national security, in region aid and lots of it, we need to help. There's a lot of people suffering, Larry, and we need to help them. I, I completely get that. But just open access, just come on into the United States right now until we know who the people are. I don't think it has to be, by the way, uh, you know, Donald Trump got a lot of flack for saying a ban on Muslim immigration. It's really regional. Where are they coming from, immigration bans? That's, uh, or, or temporary moratoriums. I will say the rhetoric's got to be better on both sides, both the Republicans and the Democrats. Neither one, neither the presumptive nominee are getting ace for, for uh, language here. For, for uh, what specific policy, what FBI change do you want to see? Number one. When you've got somebody that's met with a suicide bomber that ends up being the suicide bomber that was the first American suicide bomber uh, that went to Syria, and you've met with him, and now we know it's more extensive than they first thought, guess what? Keep him on the watch list. That's number one. Number two, 
when you have information and people are afraid to say something because they're afraid to be leveled, uh, labeled a bigot, we need to change that kind of paradigm from the top. So that's number two. Number three, look, we've got an enemy. The enemy is ISIS. The president initially called him the JV team. Now he's acknowledged that they're a serious player. They've con this different than Al-Qaeda. They're controlling regions of the world. We need to operate in military format to end this threat. Doesn't mean another one will come up. Another one will come up. But you've got to eliminate this one. And then you go on, you've got to multitask this at the same time. A declaration of war. ISIS has declared war on us. We should declare it. We should we reciprocate. And I think the international community has to step up the game here. For instance, reports were, as we're taping this right now, as we're doing this broadcast right now, <laughs> reports are that out of Belgium, a terror group has left Brussels and is in France. Well, where are they in France? And the guy that, you know, did not get a lot of attention is a police officer and his wife were killed in Paris the night after the Orlando attack by a Muslim terrorist. He was in jail until three months before. So we've got to realize what we're dealing with here. This is stop viewing these as criminal cases. These are acts of terror. I'm not worried about prosecuting them. As Lindsey Graham said, I'm worried about stopping them. Are you surprised that Obama has gotten virtually no heat for pulling out every single troop out of Iraq at the end of 2011, calling it sovereign, safe, self-reliant? Jay, he pulled out the troops over the objections of his Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, over the objections of his Secretary of Defense, over the objection of the CIA head, of the ambassador to Iraq, over the objection to the Joint Chiefs, did it anyway, and I haven't seen virtually any criticism from the left or from the right about that decision. Well, look, I mean, I have been critical. I know you have, too. I mean, the, no status of force agreement. That would have stopped the whole rise of ISIS, by the way, uh, if you had a status of force agreement in place. So that's number one. Number two, we created a vacuum was created in the Middle East. Who's filling? I mean, look at the most unholy alliance going on right now. Uh, I've got a book coming out in September about this. I mean, look at Syria, Iran, and Russia. And you got the, you got the Russians flexing their muscles in the Middle East, which they haven't done since the collapse of the Soviet Union. I think there's a serious issue here. The president allowed a vacuum to be created. It's been filled by radical groups, and others are going to take advantage of it. All right, Jay, thank you very much for, uh, for joining me on this edition of Politics.